So yes, I'm with Cork Environmental Forum, but also with the Transport and Mobility Forum, and I'm just going to go through maybe more the focus of, you know, on the ground, what advocates are trying to do on how we're trying to engage as well more with the public around, around these issues. So the challenge is, these are some of the things people say, we're a sprawling city, we think Cork's a small city. We've lost the suburbs, and then we built out of town shopping centres, and we sprawled out the, um, as has been referred, where our employment is. And Darren's dead right. Employment, all your facilities and your leisure, everything should be within walking distance, if at all possible. In terms of sustainable travel and advocacy, what has been happening more in the civic side of things? So, CEF set up in 1995 after the first Rio Earth Summit, very much around sustainability and trying to relay that message. Um, position paper five was the fifth one de developed in um, CEF. We have a whole raft of position papers on all sorts of thematic areas. Cork Cycling Campaign, some of the people involved in that are here, that's going back to 1999. So people have been interested in getting more multimodal you know, more sustainable travel going in the city. But I think the Transport and Mobility Forum is, we're very lucky in Cork to have that. It's with the service providers like Irish Rail and Bus Erin, but also with green schools, with the city and county councils, uh, with a whole range of, of um, different, different members. You know, UCC, Stefan is representing UCC. So it's really good and it's very cross-sectoral and very collaborative. So I suppose it really has brought together everybody with a like mind and this is how you engage with the public and I think the public we need to convince the public about these changes Th then you won't get the pushback that we're getting on some of the really really easy things we got the schools involved um, this was our seminar and for the people that were referencing disability I suppose we should just say our uh, mix your mode seminar we we really concentrated on that and you know that was included and we as a group it's something that we really do include and have reference to so you you're aware of that um and i suppose we we integrate across all the different um initiatives so bike week is really led by the local authorities but we all collaborate and we all help out and parking day did anyone see any parklets today <laughs> and we're very proud of this one so, you know, the TMF leveraged um, a placemaking grant from the City Council to put in a parklet. And Sandy is here, our coordinator, and she did some tremendous work, but she also has received really good feedback from people. And one of them, again, is about how this is helping. Public spaces can help people move around. About a couple who the husband can only walk as far as that parklet. He sits there, has a cup of coffee maybe from the flower studio, while his wife goes downtown, has, does a bit of shopping and comes back. So it's facilitating people, but it's also the social bit and it's making places nicer. And there are bike racks on it. We designed in some bike racks at the inn there. So it's really good. And then we've been doing our Rebel Pedal since 2000 and we've been trying to get Cork to go car free. The Rebel Pedal will take place again this Sunday on the 22nd of September. But improving links and permeability and thanks to the Southern Regional Assembly we have a lovely new pedestrian and cycling bridge which we went over today with Rob Heffernan. But, but that is really good, like the connectivity there and the positives that infrastructure like that can bring. Um, to the city. We are on the right track. I mean, Kent Station, that turnaround, that's really good. And train travel, you know, it's only a few years ago where you, if you missed your train to Dublin, you weren't going to be an hour late for the, for the meeting, you were going to be three hours late for the meeting. So the, the frequency issue and the number of people, like train, I, I love the train. I wouldn't, I don't know if anyone in this room drives to Dublin, but I wouldn't even dream of it. I mean, the train is affordable and it's comfortable and you can work on it and it's, it's really great. So the train is a great service that we have. And these were just some of the things, it's there, the 74% increase on the buses. So, so people, want to, people want to use the public transport if it's there, but there just isn't enough of it. Often it's not frequent enough, it's con not connected enough. So we need to be taking the risks now to make the changes that we need to make. And we heard already, you know, trans we know it, transport, Agriculture and energy are the three big contributors. So really, we can do a lot with transport, just with the park and rides, with extended bike schemes, with better buses and, you know, a few small things. They're the low-hanging fruit, not the expensive, costly roads, really. So I think it's about prioritising people and the environment, and we don't do that.
and there's a great Indian saying that I love. When the last tree is cut down, when the last fish has been caught, only then will you realize that money can't be eaten. Thank you.